Welcome to another presentation of P-Shell. This short demonstration will introduce P-Shell in synchronous mode. Before we talk about synchronous mode, see some details about a minimum of required setup. We have Creo installed in Creo Tickle slash Creo 4.0, and we know how to start this by using our start bat file. Next the pshell sandbox is located in creotickle slash pshell. Within this folder there is the complete tcltk environment, and the files we need for pshell. The final step is to glue creo, and pshell together. The first file, is the file to register pshell in creo. If you name this file protk.dat, creo will recognize this file automatically, if this could be found in your working directory. The second file will basically execute our creobat file, but it will change first to our working directory and expand the Windows path variable to enable dynamic loading of the required DLLs. On creo start, pshell will be initialized. During this initialization you can register menu buttons in creo. A pshell menu button in creo will simply source a script file, given by you. Before the given script is executed tcltk will be started, and the pshell commands to access the creo database will be loaded. To make the process, for register different application callbacks, as simple as possible, pshell will recursively search the sandbox folder, program, for a file named pshell underline in it. Now let's see this life. First check the content of the pro toolkit.dat. You see we specify a name, how we want to start the DLL, the DLL location and a text folder. This is our batch file for starting Creo. Here we extend the path variable, change the current folder and start Creo with loading and assembly. Before we start Creo and pshell in synchronous mode, see the folder structure. The program folder will contain some subfolder. Each subfolder will have a pshell initialize file in the file to execute. If we click the creo button, the last folder we want to ignore for the first start. Now we start creo. During creo start, pshell will be registered, and each pshell initialize will be executed. On execute we will specify a callback. The callback will handle the menu creation in the file to be executed, if we click the menu. Here you see our cascading menu structure was created, next we click our first program, you see the program is executed, due to the fact that we execute a script, we can modify our code if we edit the script, without unloading the DLL or restarting Creo we can execute the script again. Now we exit Creo, and enable our third menu button. In the Creo My Parameter section you will see now the specified check menu button. The original program will exit if we click the export button, but now we change the code, to export parameter from model files given by a pattern. Let's see the code in more detail. The first procedure will open a file where the file name is given by the model name. The first line in our output file is a header, specified by name, type and value. Next we get the list of model parameter handle objects. In a loop we export the parameter, where the order is sorted. Finally we close the file handle. The second procedure will get a name pattern. Based on this pattern we get a list of model names, where this pattern is matching. If the pattern match we call the procedure to export the parameter information. The last line in our program will call the second procedure. In the this example we want to get all parameter data in files, for each part file and session. The original code you can find at the TCL wiki, this code will be copied in our program. Instead of calling the exit command. We ask for export the parameter data to files. Now we exit the running program, 
and restart with the modified source code. We pick the export button, and you see, all the files are created in the folder named out. For the frame part, open the editor and review the content of the file. Now we modify the frame part. We edit the parameter set, by adding a new parameter. After edit, we activate the assembly again and execute the pshell program. If we now review the frame part file, you see the just edited value as part of the export. That's it. Thank you for viewing.